Thing will, yeah. See what they so are. What, what, what do you, what did you guys think? Did you have any guesses as to like? Any guesses? What yeah, they yeah, are? yeah, yeah. What they are? Some heads, brother. <laughs> <laughs> G'day guys and welcome back to another season for Wine for the People. Now if you followed on last year, what we started doing during the middle of COVID was a bit of a live streaming series. It wasn't it wasn't really little, was it? it we, we almost did like 200 episodes. Um, we took a little bit of time off. Uh, we ended up getting a lot of hate mail because people wanted us back. However, we're not really in lockdown situations anymore. So what we decided to do is we actually rented a entire recording studio. We decided to build out a five-seater wine bar and one of the things that you guys wanted most from us that was being constantly requested was bring back the blind tastings. And why? Because when you taste blind and you're not influenced by brand and you're not influenced by price, you end up getting a review of a wine that's based purely on the qualities of the juice inside the bottle um, and whether or not we authentically or genuinely really love that. Yeah, fire. That's absolute fire. I'm heaps about this one. So uh, we just decided to come up with a, a bit of a different format. We're going to be reviewing wines, five wines, uh, once a week. Um, and we're going to be bringing in a bit of uh, a few different people. I'm Noah, I've been working in the wine industry for about five years now. Uh, I'm currently studying WSET, so I'm a industry professional but and still learning and on my own little kind of wine journey. Um, I'm very passionate about it and I want to learn more, so I'm in that kind of realm of know a bit, but not a lot. Hey, I'm Henry. I've recently started working up at Applewood slash Unico Zello. I'm one of the bartenders, cellar hand, production hands, now wine tasters for them, which doesn't make a lot of sense because I've got no qualifications to do any of those things. Uh, I don't really know. Like some people say, oh, you don't know your Bordeaux from yet. I don't know what other thing to say you don't know your Bordeaux from that. That's my level of wine tastings. I know reds from whites based on colour. I enjoy drinking some things. I'm more accustomed to putting wine in punch than in a glass, but. Here we are. Let's try some wine. Starting off with wine number Uno. She's got a little bit of haziness, a little bit of cloudiness, uh, indicating probably that it's not been fined or filtered or if it has been um, not very much. It smells like white wine, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say about wine sometimes. Definitely not sparkling. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. That's, uh, I'm pretty confident that's a pretty amazing, well-crafted uh, Chardonnay. <laughs> We're like super lean, mineral, nice texture. Feels like some kind of Italian-ish variety. Yeah, no, I really like this one. <laughs> I actually really like this one. <laughs> Shit, it's the first one. Uh, red. Definitely had some oak to this number. Nothing too like white and infected, but it smells pretty serious. Yeah, wow, okay, cool. I'm munching on chalk. If that isn't uh, if that isn't Nebbiolo, I'll tell you what, that is gorgeous. So I'm hoping that when they come in and do the tastings in a minute, they're gonna be like, oh, this is such a tanny white, and I'm actually leveling up as a wine drinker because I'm getting rid of that furry mouth in this one. And I think tannin, lock it in, I'm gonna say this has got some tannin in it, this wine. That's Nebbiolo, for sure. Absolutely. No shadow of a doubt, that's freaking Nebbiolo. I'm, I'm big into this. This is, this is cool. Yeah, great. Again, wine maker, this one, fantastic. Really well done. You should be very proud of yourself. All right, wine number two. In comparison to the last wine, no, wine number three, sorry, wine number three. Um, this one's a lot darker. Uh, a lot denser, deeper in colour, a lot darker, so this is probably going to be some kind of a feeling like Cabernet or Shiraz or something like that. It... Not entirely like farts, but there's also like a little bit of sulphur coming through, I think, I don't know. It's a little bit farty. It's a little bit reductive. Yeah, look, with steak, I'd be all about it. Get a bit of butter on your fork as well, throw that through it. As a, what, what are we, as a 
10.17 a.m. Monday morning wine. I'm not entirely convinced that it's one I'm gonna absolutely demolish, but yeah, very, very delicate. Super delicate, in fact. It smells amazing. Absolutely brilliant. This is like solo, like this is so delicious. Get some like lemony flavors coming through, like low on fish, you can slam it down fast. The commercials back in the day, solo, you're absolutely right. Absolutely chug a solo after a day. Same with this wine. I would absolutely demolish this white wine. All right, last wine, wine number five for the week. Mm. That is a flavor I've never experienced in wine before. What's going on there? Um, oh, that's delicious. Uh, oh. Uh, cool wine though, again, six bottle thing. Yeah, that'll do me well. Shuckers. Yeah, so what was your, okay, what were your favorites? Uh, between yeah, so these five? I reckon, uh, like, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Number one, I'm gonna say, was the fourth one we tried. Yeah. That one, that one's number one for me. Number two, I would say, number two. Yeah. Number two is number two. Three for number five. Yeah. Like, so that's three, yeah. and then the first one was number four, and then the middle one is number five. Yeah, cool. So bang, 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 bang. Lockie, can you reveal what wine number one was? This is Pra, which is um, a, an amazing producer out of uh, northern Italy, Veneto, uh, Suave, of course, the great variety is Garganaga. Um, and yeah, I mean, look, at the end that's of the day, why Suave, I like it so much. Suave is, you know, uh, a really easy drinking, very approachable, um, you know, style of, of uh, beverage. There we go. This is 2016, which is actually on record as being one of the best vintages ever. Wow. Uh, Barolo Castiglione from Vietti. Um, yeah, dope. Lucky, what was it? What do we got? Ooh, that's an interesting bottle. That's an interesting bottle. <laughs> oh, God, let's go range! Let's go range! Right? That's oh. amazing! 2018 as well. So Cabernet, Merlot, Petit Verdot, they are a, um, a, a hands-off. So yeah, very These off. are the, the OG natural winemakers from the hills. It's Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Verdot, so it's a Bordeaux blend. Um, super cool little wine. I actually thought... Um, that's great. Fun. Yeah. Fun. That, I, like, that's conscious above its weight. Like, yeah. Well and truly. Oh! oh we're both wrong! Dude, that's awesome. I told well, you guys. We're, we're hills. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're hills. hills. We're Pinot Gris. We're right BK there. wines over. What was it? Ooh! Oh my god! god. This, is, this is meant to be like a magic <laughs> wine. Oh no, is it a really good really? wine? Yeah, wow, okay. Oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> Camellia. Oh, no! So this is a, an amazing, this is uh, Tempranillo Tariga from um, the Camellia Vineyard in McLaren Vale. Um, wow. All right, guys. Well, we're going to be doing this uh, once a week, uh, going through five different wines, uh, blind, Tasted, so we will not have any idea what we're drinking uh, until they get revealed at the very end. Um, of course, we've got Noah, we've got Henry, um, who are providing wonderful commentary over these wines. Uh, but guys, thanks commentary. so much for chiming in. <laughs> <laughs> we're providing commentary. Smash the like button as always, uh, and we'll be catching you in a week.